I've had improved vision. I used to have chronic sinus headaches. Now they are totally gone, which is incredible. I'm 35. I figured, you know, the, the pains in my legs were just part of the process of getting older. Those are gone from varicose veins. Hair loss has improved. I've had problems with my menstrual cycle. That's improved. My energy is just skyrocketed. I had chronic back pain that I would get for two to three days a week, religiously every week. Six weeks later, it was gone. I just even feel more youthful, and uh, I just can't say enough about it. And my, old, my whole desire now is to just share it with everyone. What I am so excited about is finally finding a company that's dedicated on finding the root causes, not putting Band-Aids, no drugs, this body can't handle them. Hi, my name is Gord Alcock, and what you're going to learn in the next few minutes will unlock the secret to the vibrant health that you deserve. And here's why. Because the philosophy of cleansing and rebuilding your body is an absolute daily necessity. You're about to start the most exciting program that you could possibly offer your body. And the fact that you've taken time out to watch this video demonstrates that you really care about your health. I have the distinct pleasure of introducing you to Dr. Ross Anderson. Dr. Anderson is a naturopath doctor and has been practicing for 20 years and has personally attended to over 25,000 patients and administered over 250,000 treatments. Here's Dr. Anderson. It's so important now more than ever before to take responsibility for your own health. I wish to explain to you one of our most serious health challenges that faces our society today. With the advancement of technology has come a huge toxic burden on our bodies. Never before in history have we had such a toxic overload on our systems. There are toxins coming from the air we breathe, the water we drink, and even the foods that we eat. Toxins also arise from our poor eating habits, resulting in an inability of the body to properly eliminate waste materials and they end up staying in our bodies. We then start to self-poison our bodies, and this is called auto-intoxication. Auto-intoxication is a rapidly growing problem in our society today, and everyone is a potential sufferer. So after practicing for more than 20 years and using more than 4,000 different products in my clinic, I feel I've finally found the answer to this major concern in our lives. The two products that I have found will effectively cleanse the body and then nourish it, nourish it so the body can rebuild itself. In essence, the body can clean out the toxins and regenerate itself, allowing itself to be rebuilt. I've witnessed so many positive results from my patients, my family, and my friends that I'm now recommending these products to a large percentage of my practice. And I feel it's my responsibility. I feel compelled to share this information with other people. I want you to pay very close attention to the next few minutes of this video because the information you're going to receive is very important. To begin with, I want to explain to you how your body works, how the problem of auto-intoxication begins, how it affects the body, and how to help solve this problem. Let's begin by giving you a quick anatomy lesson. So let's take a look at the human digestive system. This is the digestive system, starting here at the mouth, food then proceeding down the esophagus into the stomach, where it's propelled then into the small intestine, which is about 25 feet long. Muscles in the wall of the small intestine move the food along through what's called peristaltic action. Food is then propelled into the large intestine, which is about five to six feet long, with even stronger muscles in the walls of the large intestine moving the food through and then expelling it from the body. So digestion starts in the mouth with the process of chewing. Chewing is incredibly important. The, the first step in any journey is the most important. And without proper chewing, the rest of the digestive process cannot occur normally. Food has to be tasted. The tongue has what are called taste buds, which are little nerve centers, which taste different sensations for different parts of the tongue, sour, bitter, salty, sweet. The, the tongue tells the nervous system what food is coming down into the, the digestive system so that the enzymes can be produced to properly digest different kinds of food. George Osawa, the, the developer of macrobiotics, says you should chew your food 
50 times per mouthful, 50 times. And I guarantee you, if you start doing this, you will notice some amazing changes in the way your digestion works. Humans need to chew the, your food. That's why we have molars in the back of our teeth, to chew the food properly. We're now in what's called the fast food generation. We grab food, we, we eat it on the run, we eat at work. Many of my patients, I think, think they have an extra pair of teeth in their stomach. That's hard to believe, but I, th I really think they think that. The stomach has to work so much harder when you don't chew your food, because the stomach's job is to turn the food into a thick liquid so that it can be processed properly by the small intestine. This thick liquid is, a co is called chyme. It passes into the small intestine where it's then propelled along. And in the small intestine, more enzymes are put in from the liver, from the gallbladder, from the pancreas to help break the food down into a much, much thinner consistency so that the nutrients can be absorbed by your body. Now we're going to look at a close-up of the small intestine. The small intestine is 25 feet long and the width of your thumb. The small intestine contains villi, which are small finger-like projections that come out from the walls of the small intestine to increase the area for the absorption of nutrients. The problem arises when you get a caked film that covers over the villi and prevents them from absorbing the nutrients properly. This caked film mixes with excess mucus on the villi, which will result from irritation caused by toxins. It's almost like mud. It's as if you dipped your hands in mud and then tried to eat a meal. Junk food, like fried food, white flour, sweets, greasy foods, caffeine drinks, even alcohol, will create this, along with improper eating habits. You can be eating the best organic foods or the best supplements, but if you're not absorbing them, what good are they going to do? Clean out this rotting sludge out of the intestines so that you can properly absorb the nutrients. I want you to just imagine for a moment, if you didn't brush your teeth for a full week, what would your teeth look like? What if you didn't brush your teeth for two or even five years? Sometimes people have a buildup in their body, in their intestines, for more than 20 or 30 years. The digestive system is 30 feet in length. 25 feet of that is small intestine. And the last five to six feet is your colon, your large intestine, or bowel. This is where the waste materials called toxic fecal matter collect and accumulate over time, causing health challenges. This is where you can receive a serious decrease in your health potential. What is fecal matter? Fecal matter is the waste material left after your food is digested. Toxic fecal matter comes from eating junk food and from the poor eating habits that we talked about. Your colon is supposed to eliminate toxic fecal matter completely from the body, this toxic fecal matter that arises from poor eating habits and eating junk food. The waste materials left over after we eat our food are supposed to totally leave the body. Toxic fecal matter is the perfect breeding ground for bad, abnormal bacteria. You see, the, the human fecal matter has over 100 billion bacteria per gram of fecal matter but there are good and bad bacteria in the bowel. And if the toxic fecal matter sits for too long, bad bacteria start to live, and this creates more toxins that are then reabsorbed into the body, and this causes auto-intoxication. Let me explain slow digestion. Slow digestion is when we have not enough bulk, and we have poor eating habits. The human digestive system is supposed to move very quickly, the time it takes food to go in your mouth and then go all the way through your digestive system should be about 18 to 20 hours. I have lots of patients who come in and they say, I'm very regular, I have a bowel movement once or twice a day. But they're eliminating meals that they ate three, four, five days ago. So this is a different form of constipation. And then there's true constipation where I get patients who come in and they have a bowel movement once a week or once every three or four days. Imagine what's happening to that food as it sits in the bowel for so long. And then patients say, well, where does it all go? Well, the, the bowel usually is about this big around, and it can expand to five times its normal size. Have you ever seen somebody with these great big stomachs on them, on them and wondered what's going on with this big stomach and the skinny legs and what's happening in there? 
all this fecal matter starts to ferment and putrefy and, in essence, rot. Can you imagine if you took a hamburger and put it on your kitchen counter for, well, let's say, a week, what it would smell like after a week? What about after six months or after five years? The hamburger starts to ferment and putrefy and rot. The quality of the foods that we are eating has decreased significantly over the last 50 years. Human digestion used to move a lot quicker because of the much higher bulk content in the food. We didn't have the kind of junk food that we have today. One of the world's most eminent authorities on health and the bowel, Dr. Bernard Jensen, says that the human digestive system can only hold three to four meals at one time. On this slide, if you see here, it shows the different meals as they go through the digestive tract and how the human digestive system should look with three to four meals. But what happens in slow digestion is that the digestion backs up. and We can have as many as eight to 10 meals in somebody who thinks that they are functioning normally. The concept is simple, one meal in and one meal out. In normal human functioning, when you eat a meal, you should have the urge to get rid of a meal, to, to have a bowel movement. But that very rarely happens. I had a patient the other day come in to me. This is a woman with three years of daily headaches, acne all over her back. And the first question I asked her was, how often do you have a bowel movement? She said, once a week. I said, do you think that's normal? And of course, her reply was, yes, I've always been like that. So her constipation is the primary reason she has headaches and skin problems. Imagine the sewage pipes in your house if the, if the sewage just sat there, imagine the grunge that would build up in those sewage pipes. That's what happens in your large intestine if your digestion is not moving fast enough. And if you're wondering where 15 to 20 meals would go, I'll explain again. The bowel expands to five times its normal size. The muscles in the bowel that normally push the food out will stretch, and then they become lax and cannot function normally. Bowel movements then occur by pressure that builds up after meal after meal going into the bowel. That pressure eventually gets so great that it pushes out one large bowel movement. And I have patients like this. They have a huge bowel movement every four, five, six days. And they think that that's normal. But that movement may be a meal that you ate two days ago or seven days ago or even longer. The fact is that eight out of 10 people in North America are constipated to at least some degree. This fecal matter in the bowel starts to ferment and putrefy in the colon and becomes very toxic. And because it's sitting in the body, your body begins to reabsorb the toxins back into the bloodstream. This is called autointoxication, which means the body repoisoning itself with its own waste material. The Royal Society of Medicine in Great Britain had 57 of their top surgeons and physicians study the various health challenges that occur in the body and felt that a large percentage of health challenges were a buildup of toxins. They also felt, after further research, that these toxins were coming primarily from the large bowel in the body, and that there were up to 36 poisons being released into the body from toxic fecal matter that's been sitting there for a long time, fermenting and putrefying. Symptoms of some of these poisons are Poisons like tryptamine, which leads to high blood pressure, histamine, which leads to headaches, racing of the heart, depression, and sometimes nausea, phenol, which leads to circulation problems, muscle irritations, damage to the liver and the kidneys, hydrogen sulfide, which leads to congestion in the body and an increased absor absorption of toxins back into the body. Some of the symptoms that can occur with these problems are simple, if you think about it. Bad breath. Bad breath occurs when you're actually breathing out the toxins from the blood. A coated tongue occurs usually. If you look at your tongue in the mirror, you might see a coated tongue as a symptom of toxic bowel. Sore joints and stiffness, nervousness, fatigue, skin problems like rashes. The list goes on and on because the, this affects the whole body. These toxins go to every cell in your body. You see why it's so important to clean out this toxic residue and allow the body to rebuild itself. Can you imagine if your toilet was backed up and you flushed it, what would happen? Of course, it spills over and the, all the, the waste goes into your bathroom and into your house. 
It's so important to focus on the problem, not on the symptom. When you clean out the problem, the symptoms will take care of themselves. A quick, simple philosophy that has been around since the late 1800s is cleansing the body will allow you to be healthy. So I've taken up a new hobby recently. I'm looking in antique shops for books about these very topics. Here's a book written in 1929 by a medical doctor about auto intoxication and how important it is to keep the bowel functioning normally and how the bowel can affect the whole body. Here's another book written in 1901 by a medical doctor called Intestinal Ills about this topic again and how important it is to cleanse and rebuild the body. But things aren't the same as they were back then. We are now living in the fast food generation. This has gotten us off the path of staying healthy. You see, the human body eliminates toxins and poisons in four different ways. The first way is through the lungs. We breathe out gas wastes through the lungs. The skin is another way. Sweat and oil is a way that the body eliminates toxins. Liquid waste goes out through the urine created by the kidneys. And the fourth way is the large intestine called the bowel or the colon. And the colon is like the drainage pipe of the body. Imagine your kitchen sink plugged up for a moment. What would happen if the faucets were turned on full blast and your drainage pipe was clogged? What would eventually happen? The water would eventually spill over out onto the floor and into your house. That's exactly what happens when your colon is plugged and not functioning properly. When your colon gets backed up, the toxins start to spill over. And then the other three elimination systems have to take on that toxic load. It's a tremendous amount of stress and overload on those other three systems if the bowels aren't working properly. Because these toxins are released into the bloodstream, this then can affect every cell in the body. The lungs, of course, if they're over, overloaded with toxins, will cause respiratory problems, breathing problems. The skin, you get irritations, rashes breaking out on the skin. The kidneys, if the kidneys are irritated, you can get back aches and other problems with the urinary system. And the liver gets severely stressed because the toxins, as they're absorbed from the bowel, immediately go to the liver. If the liver cannot hold all of the toxins, they spill over into the bloodstream. When your body starts to self-poison itself, this is called auto-intoxication, as we talked about before. Auto-intoxication, or bowel toxemia, sometimes known as leaky gut syndrome, which means the toxins are leaking into your body. Dr. William Hunter said that the colon is the sewer system of the body, but with neglect and abuse, it becomes a cesspool of toxins that spill over into the body. Imagine if all the garbage trucks in your community went on strike. And they took the next six months off. What would your lot yard look like? What would it smell like after six months? What if they took the next five to ten years off? What would happen with all that accumulated waste material? Collecting. Imagine if your drainage pipe does that same sort of thing. What most people do, do they clean out their drains regularly? No, they wait until their sink backs up and overflows. Then they clean it out. Dr. Bernard Jensen, Jensen says that the average healthy person has between 7 and 25 pounds of fecal matter in their colon at any one time. And Dr. Norman Walker, who, by the way, died at the age of 109, one of the foremost pioneers of work on keeping the bowel clean, he said that out of 100,000 autopsies that he had worked on, there were less than 10% normal colons. By now, everyone is aware of reflexology and how there can be reflex points on the feet or the ears for every part of the body. Well, Dr. Norman Walker, in his theories, felt that a toxic buildup of, of fecal matter in the bowel could relate by reflex points to any part of the body. For instance, hay fever here, asthma here, liver here, heart, pancreas here, reproductive system here, eyes here. So every part of the body, according to Dr. Walker, could be affected by a toxic fecal buildup in the bowel. So here is a picture of a badly distorted colon with ballooning of the colon here, stretching many times its normal size, impacted fecal matter lining the inner wall of the bowel, and a stricture here where there's a spasm, a tightening of the a narrowing of the bowel, and another ballooned area that has to work extremely hard to push the fecal matter through another very tight stricture. 
People with this type of problem have very, very small bowel movements. This area has to work extremely hard to push the stool out of the body. This is one of the main reasons for hemorrhoids, is straining at the stool. This is one of the primary reasons why people have worms and parasites. This is the perfect home for worms and parasites. And when you remove the problem, when you get that bowel cleaned out, the worms and parasites, they will move out as well. This type of a person frequently alternates between constipation and diarrhea and will have very small stools. They're very, very constipated. And this is when people, when they have this situation, this is when they will turn to laxatives. A laxative is an irritant. It irritates the bowel, and it makes the bowel expel whatever is easy to expel, but it will not expel the toxic impacted fecal matter that is built up on the inner linings of the bowel. Did you know that there are more than 44 million people in North America on laxatives? This is a drawing of the abnormal colon of a 36-year-old woman. This is a drawing of the x-ray showing the different areas of ballooning and strictures related to Dr. Walker's reflex patterns. Here we have sinus problems. Here we have visual problems, indigestion, enlargement of the liver, low blood pressure, adrenal problems, kidney problems, bladder trouble, and problems with the rectum and hemorrhoids. Do you happen to know anyone like this? Somebody who drinks coffee, drinks alcohol, eats chocolate bars, and smokes? This is the type of lifestyle that will create toxins and poisons building up in the body. And if the digestion is not working properly, that's what happens. The symptoms that you will get from having a toxic bowel are bad breath, because you're breathing out the toxins and poisons with your breath. Skin problems, as the toxins come out through your skin, you can get all kinds of rashes, different problems. Colds, uh, frequent colds, decre decrease in the immune system, sore joints, sore muscles, achiness, fatigue. People with toxic bowel always have low energy. Foul-smelling bowel movements, premenstrual problems. What happens when you get a pain? What's the first thing most people do when they get a pain or a headache? They take a painkiller. Imagine you're driving in your car. You're driving down the road, and the oil light comes on on the dashboard. What do you do? Do you clip the wire to the oil light and keep driving down the road? No. You stop, and you get the car checked, if you're smart, as soon as you possibly can to find out what's causing the problem. So when you get rid of the problem, the toxic bowel buildup, you can get rid of the symptoms. Now we're going to look at what really happens in our colons because of our lifestyles. This is what a normal colon looks like, like with a very, very nice, even shape. Here is a colon where it has ballooned in the latter part of the bowel with pockets of poisons and toxins building up on the walls of the bowel. Here is colitis where there's actual severe inflammation causing severe pain with probably alternating diarrhea and constipation with ballooning of the colon and strictures with pockets of poisons called diverticuli. Here's another diverticuli here, a number of them. This is a very common condition. And these people know that they have inflammation because they always have pain. Here is a spasm, constant spasm, where the bowel has to work extremely hard to push the fecal matter through. These people have very small bowel movements and have a lot of straining at the stool. And these are strictures where the bowel has actually uh, shrunk in size. And this comes from stress and a very fast lifestyle. And here is what's called a prolapse. This is when the bowel gets full of toxic fecal matter and starts to hang down. And it hangs down like a clothesline suspended at the two corners, putting pressure here on the organs down, further down in the pelvis. In the female, the uterus and bladder and ovaries, and in the male, the prostate and the bladder. This is what the female organs look like in the healthy state, the ovaries and the uterus, with a nice bowel sitting right in its normal position. This is what it looks like when that part of the bowel has that clothesline effect, causing pressure and distortion in the female organ. This can lead to all kinds of problems, like premenstrual problems, midlife crisis, and other problems, congestions of the, of the reproductive system. This is because of a toxic buildup of waste material weighing down 
this part of the bowel. And so many problems with women's reproductive systems are unnecessary if the bowel is kept functioning normally. And for the men who think that this is only a problem for the women, yes, again, look at where the large bowel sits in relation to the bladder and the prostate gland. And if this is full of toxic fecal matter, that will actually push down and weigh down on the prostate and the bladder. And Dr. Stephen Chang of California feels that the toxins actually pass from the rectum directly through into the prostate. And if you're wondering why prostate problems are so prevalent in men over the age of 40, this is one of the primary reasons. So before I show you some x-rays, I want you to remember what a normal colon looks like. Do you remember the shape of the normal colon with its, with its nice even shape all the way up and down and through and out through the rectum? Well, here are some x-rays of some abnormal colons. Here's a severely ballooned colon that will be pushing on the kidney. Here's another one that will be causing severe stress on the reproductive system. Here's another ballooning of the colon with a stricture here. And this ballooning will be pushing on the spleen. There's another one here with a severe ballooning and pressure on the reproductive system. Here's another one here showing large area of stress and strain through here with ballooning over on this side, pushing on the liver. This x-ray shows a severe buildup and ballooning of pressure in the lower bowel. This is somebody with a very large abdomen. They have skinny legs and a large tummy. And this is not necessarily fat. When you see somebody with a large stomach, it doesn't mean that, they are, that they're fat. They can have a large amount of fecal matter built up in that lower bowel. Studies have shown that when you quit smoking, it can take up to seven years to clean all the debris out of your body and allow the body to rebuild after all that pollution. And it's the same with the bowel. Look what happens. Look what comes out of people. Look at these monstrosities that have come out of people. These are fecal impactions. These are, are things that have been sitting in people for years and years and finally come out when the bowel is cleansed. They actually take the shape of the bowel. That's why they look like this. They take the shape of the bowel because they've been in there for so long. You are supposed to have two to three bowel movements a day if you're eating the three to four meals that most people eat. They should be effortless, odorless, and well-formed and leave you with a feeling of satisfaction and cleanliness when you're finished. And do you remember this picture of this badly distorted colon with all of this distortion in here? Well, this type of a problem can actually lead to colitis, which is a severe inflammation of the colon. And that, if it's not properly looked after, can lead to a colostomy. A colostomy is a removal of part or all of the large bowel. It's important to take time for your health before you run into a serious or irreversible health challenge. Too many people these days are leaving responsibility for their health up to somebody else. We have to change that and start being responsible for our own health. We have to make health a daily habit. Everything we do, the food we eat, the way we live has to be looked at every day to keep us healthy. We spend more time cleaning out our cars, cleaning out our houses, cleaning the outside of our bodies than we do cleaning the inside of our bodies. Many people today feel that it is the lotions and creams that help you stay and look young. People always are in a constant battle against aging. So I want to share with you a simple fact. You do not grow old from the outside in. You grow old and decay from the inside out. It is important to understand that we do not make any medical claims about these products. These products do not heal or cure anything. Your body heals itself. When you cut your hand, your body heals itself. Your body knows exactly what to do, but that process cannot happen the way it's supposed to if your body is toxic inside. If you were to burn down your house, what would you do before you rebuilt it? You'd clean up the debris. You'd clean away all the old debris. You would never build a, a house on top of the debris. And cleansing and rebuilding takes time. I know that as you are consistent on these products, you will see excellent results naturally and gradually. Remember, cleansing and rebuilding is an ongoing process. Once your body is cleansed, it is important to use the products on a maintenance level. And in my opinion, these products are the most logical answer to vibrant health. Many people ask me, how long should I stay on these products? My answer is, if you're eating really good, healthy food, why would you want to stop? 
I know both myself and my family will be on these products forever. I'm thankful that we had this chance to share this message with you. I have energy that just doesn't quit. Uh, my skin is 100% better. I've lost a ton of weight. And uh, I just feel a vibrant, natural body energy that I don't ever remember having before. I have no more headaches. I have no more fibromyalgia uh, flare-ups. I have very, very little pain. My swelling in my legs and uh, ankles have completely gone away. The hurting my wrist has subsided. I couldn't even open doors without just grimacing with pain. Uh, my headaches no longer, they don't bother me at all. And uh, I also had back spasms and they've all gone away. I have really, my life has just been turned around. But I've had th lost 31 pounds so far, great product. Now the products that Dr. Ross Anderson recommends in his clinic contain a very specific blend of ingredients created by a master herbalist whose herbology lineage dates back thousands of years. For proper digestive cleansing, Dr. Anderson recommends a product that contains psyllium seed husk, rhubarb root, fennel seed, corn silk, King Solomon seed, and kelp. Those are the ingredients that should appear on the label. It is also important to make sure that there has been a clinical study done on the particular digestive cleansing product that you're using to ensure safety and results. The product that Dr. Anderson recommends for properly rebuilding the body is a product that contains a specific blend of 190 vitamins, minerals, and important accessory nutrients. It's essential that the product you choose contain a proper blend of vitamins and minerals as well as amino acids from an enzymatic soy protein complex, whole food green complex blend, essential fatty acids with lipotropic factors, advanced botanical antioxidants with phenalgin, enzyme active fruit and vegetable whole juice concentrate, and minerals that are derived from Iceland plant moss. These ingredients are essential to build the body properly. It is also important that you find this product in a liquid form and that it is a 100% plant-sourced vegetarian formula to ensure maximum absorption in the body for the best possible results. It should say this right on the bottle. Thank you again for watching this important video. We hope that you have found the information we shared with you to be informative. For more information, please contact the person who gave you this tape.